All right, guys, it's episode 99 of the Red Leaf Retrocast. We're talking anime. We got Dragon's Heaven to review today. Your host, JD, joined by the usual crew, Tori and Hickey. Tori, you watching the Chelsea game? Uh, yeah, I've got it on in the background. You ready for Pulisic to uh, to win to win one for America and your team? <laughs> uh, sure. If that's sure. what's gonna happen. Yeah. 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 There's a big article over his redemption uh, for whatever happened last year. I guess. I guess. Maybe. Oh well. We'll <laughs> see. We'll see. We will see what happens. I'm not that fussed about this. Is the FA Cup final? Honestly, if. We're going to play Leicester again in a couple of days, uh, Tuesday, I think, in the league for a position, uh, fighting for a top four position. So honestly, if, we're, if we can only win one of these games against Leicester, I'd rather they lose this one and win the one in the league, but that's just me. Um, Why not course, win both? <laughs> that would be amazing. I'd like that. Or the lose thing both. That can happen <laughs> this season, uh, rather not. The best thing that can happen this season is that Chelsea wins the FA Cup final, they beat Leicester, and then they win the, their last game, securing top four, and then they beat Manchester City in the Champions League final to win that. That'd be great. That'd be great. They gotta win three in a row, though. <laughs> uh, four in a row, yes. Four? One, two, three. Oh, right. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, right. this, this game isn't over yet. Ah. Twice against Leicester, once against Aston Villa, once against City. Well, the uh, uh, yeah. So I'm I'm I mean I've been watching NHL and and a lot of baseball and sort of NBA. I sort of kind of tune in and out. But um, my favorite hockey team, uh, both of them, the Avalanche won the best record in the NHL. So hooray! That hasn't happened since 2001. It's been only been 20 years. <laughs> so that's great. Uh, the Rockies suck. They're the worst team in baseball. So you know, a little give and take there. <laughs> And then the Jazz have to win uh, the last game of the season, and they'll have the best record in the NBA, which has never happened before. So that's really fun. And I'm sure all these teams will lose in the playoffs. Uh, well, of course not the Rockies. They're not making it. But uh, I'm sure they'll keep up tradition of the Rocky Mountains and, and lose. But damn it, do they have the best records, which makes me happy. That's what I've been doing. Hickey, how are you? I am doing fine. I'm just fine. I got a haircut. Yeah? Is it? Did, the... did, did they mess it up? Is there a good story behind no, it? No, 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 no. <laughs> I mean, it's been, what, seven months since the last time I got a haircut. Why so long? So my, uh, <laughs> because there is a thing outside still called the virus. Well, you can't like just get, you can't meet another person shop. to cut your hair? <laughs> uh, no, everything is closed. There's no way to cut your hair if the barber shops are closed. You can do it yourself. Yeah, just, just watch a YouTube it. video. I'm sure nothing bad will have happen there. Make sure you record yourself yeah. doing it though next time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then I, when I went out to, when I was about to cut my hair, I got the virus, <laughs> so I couldn't go out <laughs> for two weeks. That's why it took so long. But uh, it's fine. My head feels light. And breezy. No. Which is good. Yeah. The guy who shaved himself as well. Mm. And shaved. Dory. Are you still with the goatee? But now just shaved head? I don't have a shaved head. Like I uh, fucking. Uh, I just cut it uh, short. Mostly just on the sides. And then I. I shaved. Uh, my fucking beard. Because that was long and shit. How long are we talking here? Like a meter? Uh, <laughs> not that long. See, my beard doesn't grow long in that sense. It gets like really bushy and really thick. It grows puffy. Yeah. Like, yeah, I need to like, yeah. uh, I need to like stretch it out if I want to do that. And it's like, it doesn't really work. It's like, it just starts curling up again really fucking fast. So once it gets to a certain length, I just buss it. Uh, not completely off. I don't go completely bald, but it's like thin it out a lot. I don't like being bald, Chin. It's not. I'm not a kid anymore. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. Probably, I've yeah, been working works. a lot this week, so I'm extremely tired. Oh it yeah, me too. It's extremely irritating to deal with civil, uh, civil servants <laughs> because they don't like to work. 
I'm sorry if your civil servant and is listening to this podcast. I don't like you. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter your nationality. I just don't like you. I don't like you kind. <laughs> I hate everyone uh, equally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. It that's, was that's just a like to torture. It was just a torture. Like, I put petitions last year. Okay, last year. And they weren't in the process yet. After six, seven months, I was like, what are you, what, what are you guys doing when the courthouses were closed and no one could access, but you, you're still working? Like, did you just sit here and just scratch your balls all day? The answer was yes, but the guy didn't say that. <laughs> so, like, it was extremely stressing. I was in, in lines all day long in different cities. And then, like, people start calling because of some Supreme Court judge thing i was like please just just let this be over and i can sleep and drink drink a lot yeah but you know it, it's fine I, I i it wasn't fun but it was fine well i got to go to the bar for the first time I'm fully vaxxed so i was like man first friday fully vaxxed i'm gonna have a nice beer or three or four and then I uh, walked home and proceeded to just immediately pass out. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, okay. Well, let me get this straight. I had my beer, had my fun, and passed out like an old man <laughs> afterwards. The, the JD experience. Yeah. <laughs> I, was like, uh, I drank. Well, at least you didn't vomit this time. No, 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 no. Like, <laughs> the, the, That's the, a plus. The past self would have overly drank at the bar, walked home, passed out, and proceeded to be buried the entire next day. But instead, I just... Just fell asleep. It's like, man, I didn't even get drunk. What happened to me? <laughs> Would have been great to get a message from JD today being like, guys, I haven't left the toilet all day. <laughs> yeah. I, I, haven't, I haven't had my friend <laughs> near me in a long time. I call him Porcelain. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it was kind of, I missed the, the whole experience and just getting the, like a fresh, tapped beer and just kind of chilling and kind of people watching and and listening kind of wacky conversations i was hearing uh, one girl was talking about how her son stole money from her and gave it to his girlfriend in which then she used the same money <laughs> to pay her pay the mom back for something that she had bought <laughs> so I, I was listening to the whole kind of circle i go okay <laughs> So that was that's funny. A, that's an interesting story. Yeah, I was right just there. listening. Oh. Totally eavesdropping. <laughs> the son, the son is, is, is on the, the thought there. The <laughs> girlfriend is cool. Like, she she asked for money to, you know, repay. The problem is, you know, the, the boyfriend, of the kid, in this case, just stealing the money. <laughs> yeah. that. It's Sounds just... like they need some uh, good ass whoop in there. Yeah. It, it it was it was kind of funny because as she was telling the story, it was it was me it was me putting the pieces together. She's like, "Yeah, I, you know, I was missing like sixty bucks out of my wallet, and then uh, it just so happened that she paid me back." I'm like, you're not putting this together. <laughs> nah, she doesn't want you. She does, yeah. no, obviously not. She doesn't care. <laughs> so that was my experience. I caught up on some seasonal anime. Uh, since the last cast. Uh, Hickey, I took your think? advice and checked out Tokyo Revengers. Yeah. Any commentary? Yeah, so I watched uh, the first four episodes, because that's how much was out at the time. I think there's another one out now. But uh, I like the story. I like the premise. I like the idea of him... I, I, was, I was expecting him to just be back in time, and none of this back and forth kind of situation. So that was that was a good little element I, I kinda like where he has to Yeah, the yeah he has to act kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, he has to activate the butterfly effect and then he can go back go forward in time to see what's changed. So you the viewer also know kind of what the progression of his progression uh, actually is. So that was cool. I like the relationship between him and his girlfriend. And then kind of they, the both of them kind of looking out for each other. What I'm not quite feeling yet is the overall kind of standing of the main character. He he's 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 all he's tough in mind, but not in body. 
I kind of want to, like, I figured... Yeah, I, fi- I told you that that was going to happen. Yeah, yeah. I was like, man, that's kind of lame, because he has I this you, opportunity... You underestimated, yeah, you underestimated how weak he is. Yeah, like, it really kind of set did up you, that he was... Did you get to, to, the, to the festival yet? The summer festival? No. No? Okay. That That's going to, to be a little bit of a redemption. It doesn't change much, but uh the the summer like again it it's heavy shit there like it happens some some heavy shit happens in the future that he needs to use his body even though he's not strong if, even if it's just to get the the classic ass whooping beat up he will have to to use like there's some gang rapes and shit that goes up and in the future is yeah they definitely set up that uh, okay so there's uh for those that don't know there's two gang leaders and their kind of gang warfare ends up killing uh one of these his girlfriend of the past and it really sets up i thought well two completely different uh mindsets and characters one's actually not that bad and the other probably is the worst person imaginable (laughs) Uh, so what i thought was happening was when the brother becomes the cop and he's trained and done all this i really got that feeling that he's going to help train him for self-defense of some kind and he'd be and that's how he'd, he'd prove himself um to rise up the ranks but instead it was just he becomes friends with uh the other gang guy and i was like ah, it's not quite feeling that but everything else about the show I'm, I'm definitely into so that's that's exciting i'm definitely gonna continue watching the show it's a it's a it's a it's a welcome difference to a lot of the other things i'm watching um fully caught up in 86 some more still pretty good uh haven't caught up on shaman king quite yet and then Joron, the kind of Lady Snowblood slash spiritual element to it. I'm not sure why people are giving it poor reviews and it's not getting a lot of positive feedback on it. Am I am I missing something? Because I think it's perfectly perfectly fine so far. I need to I, I need to go back and watch it. I only watched episode one still. Like it got sick. Then this week it just I, I was it. just stressed. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to do anything. I came home, I would just sleep and then just wake up a few a few hours later, then drink some water and sleep again. <laughs> That's my shadow. The worst one was, was like on you know, Thursday. I slept on top of my arm, but my arm was resting in my jaw and I have a problem in my jaw. Oh, so God. I was speaking and screaming. The whole day in, on work, which I don't do because of the jaw problem, I don't like talking too much or opening my mouth too much. Then I went to eat bread, like soft, squishy bread, <laughs> and my jaw dislocated. What? <laughs> yeah, it wasn't fun. Tori, are so we sure? To do... Are we sure he's not the forty-year-old? <laughs> uh, no, I'm not. <laughs> I know all I know is that he's Mexican. That's about it. <laughs> hey, you know you know at least another person with the same problem I have. I, I do. That is correct. Yeah. So I had to do the the putting the jaw back in place kind of maneuver and it hurts a lot. I'm well, used yeah, to it. Dislocated a bone. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't fun. So I had to sleep with my jaw hurting a lot. Mm-mm-mm. At least I have a bunch of painkillers from the time I was sick. <laughs> Lucky so you. I just, yeah, lucky me. <laughs> uh, I got now. I, I'm I'm developing an addiction to painkillers as well. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> all right, amazing. Oh man. Then I had to what? work. Uh, yeah, it was just bad. I didn't. I didn't feel like watching anime at all. Guess what? So I caught up. What's up, Tori? Like, <laughs> just Super Cub, which is a fun little thing, and Honda sponsored show about <laughs> old. Cubs, yeah, sixty, uh, fifty cc bikes, fun. Hmm. Yeah, I've watched anime, guys. No shit. Oh, okay, Amazing. you gotta tell us, tell us all the stuff. What are you gonna say the next? Uh, <laughs> what is the next thing? You get to release a new video? 
<laughs> I mean, actually, now that you're talking about it, it's pretty close to being done, actually. Sorry, why don't <laughs> yes. you plug all your YouTube yeah. and stuff while you're at it? Ah, yes, of course. Uh, I upload videos to YouTube under the name <laughs> Anime Top Scholar, so you can check stuff out there. I haven't uploaded in two months, but uh, there is something coming out hopefully next week. Uh, <laughs> hopefully. But yeah, no, anyways. So, uh, I have watched one episode of Seasonal Anime. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, I thought you were, I thought I you were gonna tell me you binged, like, a whole season of something, oh, no, watched no, no, eight no, episodes no. of this. No, nah, I've watched no, one. No, 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 <laughs> I just want to say, I just want to piss some people off. So, I decided to, um, check out, uh, what pretty much everyone has been telling me is probably their favorite show from this season so far. So, I decided to jump onto Vivi. I watched that first episode. Oh, <laughs> that show <laughs> of all things. Okay. I don't. I don't get it. Why do people love this show? <laughs> Please go on a rant. I need to hear. Okay, so again, I've only watched one episode, and it's interesting, right? It's the typical like, oh, AI out of control, killing everyone, mm -hmm. yada yada yada. Cool, cool, cool. I like the I like the setup. I like the whole like ah happy go lucky, and then for some reason everybody's dead, but everybody's so happy. Be happy, be happy, <laughs> and uh, I I do like that. But then it's like the fucking scientist walks in like fucking bleeding, arm soul destroyed. Fucking walks by, pushes AI out of the way. He fucking locks himself into his lab and start jotting into the fucking computer. And it's like ah. Oh. I need, we need to rely on you now, Diva. And it's like, and if it's suddenly it's just fucking a hundred years in the past, fucking, uh, yeah, we're, I guess we're going to find out what happens in the future, uh, how everything gets so bad. And, but the uh, fucking v uh, Diva or Vivi, as she gets called, has to do to fucking prevent this from happening. And I'm just there, I'm like, it's, eh. It's okay, I guess. I mean, again, I've only seen one episode. They still have time to explain some shit. I just can't. I am just struggling to accept the fact that this guy plotted a fucking code into his computer, and apparently that's enough to send a fucking sophisticated AI back in time. Sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Uh, Microwave or banana hmm. next. It's the only way to fix it. <laughs> At least that makes more sense, because then they actually have a time machine. This is just a computer. <laughs> Apparently a computer with fucking, not even, not even fucking time machine capabilities. It's literally just, it sends a program back in time. <laughs> it, okay, sure. I guess program it fucking reset the, I guess it reset, <laughs> it reset the fucking system clock, I guess. Yeah, the world know. clock, don't you know? <laughs> it's a universal like, compression time clock. Yeah, no, so I'm just saying, I was like, I, I don't understand how this like, has like an 8.5 on Mal. It's like, eh, it's okay. It's okay. I'll keep watching a couple more episodes just to see what I think, but I am. It looks pretty. I guess that's something. Yeah, it's Wit Studio. They're pretty good about that. Yeah, but apart from that, it's like, mm. See, mm, I thought I you were going to tell me you watched one episode of Fumetsu, Fumetsu no Ana, Anate, or whatever it's called. Fumetsu no Anate. Yeah, that show. I don't even know what that is, so no. It's got an 8.6 on Mal. It's even better. And like three oh, times more people God. are watching it. Oh, no. no, <laughs> my God. I haven't even heard anybody talk about that. I've only heard people talk about Vivi. Everyone is going crazy about Vivi everywhere I am. Yeah, I've also heard the, uh, the Vivi in the pipeline. Uh, absolutely. I'm just not in the mood for a show like that? Definitely not. I mean, I'm always in the mood for a show that involves plenty of unreasonable murder, I guess. But... It just strikes me as kind of this more idle, cute girl show, more than anything else, with a dark plot. Uh, kinda. Kinda. Yeah. Kinda. It's kind of fucked up in that sense, because it's like, you're gonna make people happy with your singing, but how can you make people happy with your singing if you yourself are a machine and don't even know emotion? I mean, we've we've seen Macross, so <laughs> that's a thing. <laughs> yeah, yep. No, it's uh, I don't know. It sounds interesting enough, and again, I'll give it a couple more episodes just to see how it actually goes about this. But uh, so far, I'm I'm mixed on it. It's it has some good points, but I am not 
I they kind of lost me at the whole time traveling thing. At the time, time traveling is such a difficult thing to pull off, and that's that is why it just kind of annoys me that they essentially just said, you know what? Yeah, it is pretty difficult to pull off. So we're not even gonna fucking try to reason uh, reason this one out or explain it. We're just just accept it. We we just time don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not even a wee time traveled. I fucking I sent a program back in time, and now it's gonna have to try to convince this ancient relic of an AI of the past who was ancient at the time that she has to do something about this. Which I mean, to be fair, I do uh, I do like some of the interactions that program that goes back is kind of I do like that kind of like somewhat annoying vibe he's got going to it to him. It's kind of nice because maybe it's such a emotionless kind of shell of a character like just doesn't really she doesn't really speak with any sort of emotion she doesn't really react to anything so to just have this like more advanced day i essentially just fuck with her all the time sounds like That's violet evergarden nice. kind of yeah huh. yeah i've been i've been trying to get to the bottom of why people don't like joran <laughs> Yeah, that's what I've been. That's what I've been up to. Because the more common complaint I saw was the plot structure. And go, I guess I kind of understand because a lot of the major elements of the stories unfolding in in Joran you clearly see coming from a mile away. Yeah, that guy's gonna betray. Yeah, that guy actually didn't do anything. Yeah, okay, he's done this. Yeah, that girl got kidnapped and she's gonna be used. Like it, it, you just you see every single plot development just unfolding one after another just episodes before it happens but i'm okay with that because it does make sense <laughs> at the very least i go okay i want i want to know i want to know uh we, we still we're still missing kind of the the why to it all exactly and that's that, i think that's a good enough mystery for me not really looking at a lady snowblood anime as anything too deep but there's um yeah there's there's cool fight scenes i like the arts art style to it all it's kind of it's almost like a high res 80s show. It's kind of what it strikes me as. Maybe it's just hit me at the right point right now. Maybe. Okay. Uh, so we're getting close to episode 100. Uh, that's the, the next episode. And then after that, we kind of changing the structure up a little bit where uh, I think uh, we're just going to trade off picking whatever anime. So we'll go... Tori picks one. Next next time it'll be Hickey. Next time it'll be me, or whatever order we decide to go in. <laughs> yeah, H Hickey's uh, gonna have fun with this. <laughs> I don't think you understand, JD. I was gonna have fun with it. I found. Oh my god! I went yeah, to YouTube. No. Oh no, no! You need to see Tori's recording. Oh my god! What the hell? Did, did, did yeah, hold on. Let me uh, let me find one of the instances. I found a bunch of like uh, OBAs. Okay. Uh, on uh, on YouTube. 80s and 90s OVA, so like a playlist of them. And I was just going through, reading some synopsis, just trying to figure out what the hell these are. So one of the ones I came across is a uh, movie from 1990 called Heavy. And uh, it's got uh -huh. a very, very short, very sweet synopsis. I, uh, I love this one. Uh, mm -hmm. Guy, a karate expert in the New York slum, is trained to be a boxing champion <laughs> by a cancer-struck doctor what? and a transvestite suffering from AIDS. <laughs> What? That's it. That's the synopsis. And I, I, I read that, and I was like, I'm watching this. It's my Artland and Nippon animation. I'm watching that so bad. Oh my god. Artland, the Legend of the Galactic Heroes Studio, and Nippon animation. Uh, what? Yeah, that is so no, bizarre. It's like okay, it I got a plot for Ashita no Joe, but what if the guy <laughs> w was actually not in boxing first? But what if they were also in the slums of New York instead of Japan? But what if the trainer was also stricken by AIDS? But what if the crazy side character was a transvestite? <laughs> it just keeps escalating. Yeah, nah, it, it's so great. There's another one as well that I, I highlighted. It's called Cleopatra DC. And it's like <laughs> uh, this not, it's like the Cleopatra Corns Group, aka Cleopatra DC, is a powerful financial conglomerate controlling most of the United States economy, almost as powerful as the U.S. government itself. At the top of the organization is the beautiful, smart, and brave Miss Cleo, the group's young, talented chairman. This is good. 
It means she can handle the repair bill when that airplane crashes into her bedroom with stolen artifacts, corporate kidnappings, and top secret cyborg projects gone awry. Her luck only gets worse from there. It's like, I love that synopsis because it's like, for a while I'm, I'm fucking, I'm with that synopsis and then it's just like, wait, hold on. Everything changes the moment that fucking airplane com comes crashing through the fucking roof. All right. So instead of the anime trope of a woman falling into the bedroom, it's a plane. <laughs> with It's a plane. Stolen artifacts and corporate kidnappings and fucking cool. cyborg projects. And... <laughs> oh, my God. This is... Yeah. I'm, I'm going to go it's through that playlist more in the future. Produced. That's some... Oh, man. <laughs> I like that it, it's called, like, it was produced by, JC the studio was JC Staff, but it, ha it has Agent 21, which produced Dominion as well. Oh. Yeah, for producers, yes. And just oh, wacky yeah. shit for the years. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's, that's the sort, of, I'm glad I found that playlist. That's, that's my sort of shit right there. Just dumbass OVAs. Oh, man. I'm worried about this path we're about to. <laughs> yeah, there's on. another one. There's another one from from Agent Twenty One, High School Agent, Teenager Kanemori Kosuke is a secret agent for the International VN Spy Network. Using his com his computer hacking hacking skills, he tracks international criminals. Later, he goes after neo Nazis to the Arctic, where he tries to raise a U boat with a sinister secret. Oh yeah, oh man, man. Oh, the 80s. Struck all the, uh, struck all the key notes for well. you, Hickey. <laughs> yeah. This sounds like two episodes of Black Lagoon. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, um, kind of. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. No, nah, it's, it's just a great. That's the, that's what I'm looking forward to in the future. Just like the fucking wacky ass 80s stuff. <laughs> 80s and 90s. Oh, man. Good times, good times. Good times the, indeed. The golden age of the OVA, unlike now. <laughs> yeah, side stories. Serves no purpose. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of OVAs, I guess we can hop into some Dragon's Heaven, eh? Yep. All right, let's play this drop. Okay, three, two, one, it's jam. Anime Dragon's Heaven from... When the sucker come out? February 25th, 1988 by Studio AIC. We're quite familiar with them at this point. The director was Makoto Kobayashi. Uh, so this guy, Tori, you got some information on him <laughs> over the show in uh, particular? So, um, uh, let's see here. Because uh... I found three conflicting things of what he did with money uh and this anime yeah well the uh what i have is the interview with him in which it says that it's from him uh the live action oba mm -hmm. uh the live action parts he paid for himself uh cuz there was some um he essentially for when it comes to dragons uh, heaven he pitched the idea to bandai who okay. were originally interested but because of the uh because of like the success of uh, Macross, instead of kind of the idea that he wanted to go with, they wanted like transforming like super robots essentially, uh, a show based on that mm -hmm. more than they did. So they kind of scrapped uh, the uh, they kind of scrapped the OVA because this OVA was supposed to be earlier than it actually is. It, I read uh, it was it, supposed to be. Then... It was originally slated to be twelve episodes, and then they. Uh, shortly thereafter scrapped it and they either took the money away or because the director wanted to incorporate his live action robot, his real robot, into the show, it was too expensive to actually do, which I got conflicting information. It was through his own money or the studio's money he used for this real robot. Oh, uh, yeah. Either way, it's a funny, Either funny way. story. <laughs> but yeah, no, the uh... so essentially, like he is uh, Makoto Kobayashi is a um, a designer, a mecha designer, yeah, and a uh, kind of plastic models guy. 
not so much a uh, not so much a director. Although even then, he he wasn't actually into uh, into like real uh, like uh, you know robot kits and shit like that. Mm-hmm. Actually making them, he didn't do much of that until he started working on this OVA in which they just kind of went to town with it. That's kind of where he got his inspiration to actually get into that stuff. So oh, that's kind of that? that's kind of funny. But yeah, now nah, he's worked on stuff like uh, let's see, the OVA Birth, which is kind of similar to Megason Twenty Three. Oh, interesting. Uh huh. He's also worked on stuff like uh, CC Gundam. Uh. Oh, Double Zeta. That yeah, Double Zeta Gundam, and uh, yeah. Okay. All right. So, Dragon's Heaven's summary synopsis thing from Anime Planet, as we do. In the year 3195, there was a war between an army of robots and the humans. When Cheyenne, a sentient combat armor, lost his companion in battle, uh, okay, he shut down until his eternal systems spotted a new human. It's Almost, it's now almost a thousand years after that, and Shion's greatest enemy is still alive, his robot rival. And they're doing battle in Brazil. Hey, Hickey, your deck of the woods. <laughs> yeah, although they never show... No, Brazil. it's the Brazilian they Empire. Just... They're they are ruthless. <laughs> the Brazilian Empire that is just <laughs> somewhere. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just, you know, next door. No, don't worry about it. <laughs> With a new friend's help, that's our main character, our pretty blonde chick, who her name is Ikaru. Uh, Sean may be able to stop this evil force before another war rages over the continent. Not sure if that's Brazil or Argentina or Chile, but it's... It's definitely somewhere that isn't the Brazilian Empire. <laughs> it's the desert somewhere. The desert somewhere. Oh, they, they have the they have a name for the city. I don't remember now. It's not important. Uh, yeah, yeah. What's more important is how this show begins, and it's a straight up live action shot with the with the <laughs> real robot representation of Cheyenne reawakening during a fully animated explosive battle of war between Cheyenne and a lot of other robot shit going on and they don't really tell See, the synopsis says that he lost his companion in battle I guess that means the human uh, the human operator because that's how his mm-hmm. his uh, yeah. armor wa- yeah. or his uh, his robotness was, was pa- uh, supposed to be level up powered to attack El Median, which is his robot rival of the Brazilian Empire, I guess. <laughs> yeah, well, you didn't see the, the soup coming out of the, the suit? Yeah, I, no, I saw it, but the, the way, yeah, it, the way it the, describes... the pilot getting shot in the head. <laughs> like, they, they clearly show the guy is like, oh, no, it's okay. Although, why? There's no protection in the, the sensor, but that's okay. It just shoots the sensor and it goes straight to, to the guy's head. I was like, oh, that sucks. <laughs> also, I don't know why he's bleeding so much if it was just a, a shot to the head and he had a helmet. It wouldn't be possible to have so many red soup coming uh, out. Well, the but... answer is 1988. Hey, <laughs> yeah. that's it wouldn't why. be fun if he just got shot. He just sat there. You need the blood. <laughs> Yeah, he was yeah, turned uh, upside down, pumped full of holes. I mean, come on, that's yep. what happened. Yeah, we just one, didn't see it. one hole. <laughs> uh, like, yeah. Oh well, my operator died. Might as well just sleep now. Mm-hmm. And then when he awakens a thousand years later, he's like, "Oh, so you can just operate and fight without a without an operator? So why did you just shut down a thousand? You know what? Never mind. Doesn't matter." It's irrelevant. It's based on a doujin. It's okay. Oh, is it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's a sense. doujin. The uh, the original story for Dragon 7 is a doujin created by Makoto Kobayashi in which he later turned into a manga, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, okay. Doujin in this case is not... It's it's an original work, but it's f- not it's professionally... Work. Yeah. It's not professionally invested. Uh, mm. So the guy just did everything. He... 
did the story, he did the illustrations, he paid for the copies to be printed, he went to a Dojin event, like Comic Air, which you have original stories, original manga that doesn't have any company behind, and he sat there with a thousand yen, or like probably 500 yen, little sign, and you just buy his work. Hmm. A lot of people do that, usually you don't hear those those people except if if it's born then you, you hear a lot about that anyway yeah Dojin. uh guy is a really good mecha designer <laughs> yeah i really liked yeah. the gritty art style of the show it was definitely low produced <laughs> there's no doubt about it but they were i think they were able to make up a lot of that in kind of just the color aspects of the show the grittiness to it uh, it has a big grunge feel. I I really enjoyed that aspect of it. What oh, I yeah. looks like late late nineties Nickelodeon cartoons. Not even though, like, cause the uh, the style of the show is uh, inspired by uh, Mobius's art. So oh, uh, that's where a lot of the visual sense. inspiration for this this OVA comes from. And it's, it's yeah, it's more there, I think yeah. it's really cool. It looks it looks cool. Its animation is okay. It's not. I mean, it's an 80s OVA, but hey, I think visually speaking, apart from all the grain and like, but it makes sense there in the desert, there's a lot of sand and shit like mm-hmm. that. It's, it's a, it's got a, it's definitely got a very unique visual, uh, uh, visual style. Like you, fuck it, it's this, this OVA sticks out when you see it. You don't just like scroll past a picture for like a screenshot from this show and be like, yeah, you fucking get a screenshot of <laughs> Alma Dane or Shine or something and you're just like, hold on. <laughs> What's this? <laughs> yeah, El... I pronounced it Elmadian. <laughs> eh, Elmadian. Elmadine. I don't know. Yeah, whatever. Either it doesn't or. matter. He looked like a hammerhead shark. <laughs> it does. It's got that like weird-ass like tentacle ball. You like to kind of like going up this middle there and whatnot. It's like, ah, it's so... It's so creepy looking. I love it. Well, shit, yeah, our main character Ikaru is like, little... oh, he's my type. I was like, what? Yeah, I know, right? Are we, what are we implying here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ikaru has some funny lines. <laughs> oh, man. I love how she just doesn't give a shit. I mean, I get it, it's for time's sake, but it's like, I ran into a robot. Cool. Can I pilot you? Sure. I actually need you to pilot me. Will you do it? Yeah, if I get ha- if I get your side, your portion of the rations, I'll do it. Fantastic. Then we'll fight. Then we'll fight my. <laughs> then we'll fight my rival. It's like okay, we're just very much into this, and it's like same thing. It's like, do you know how to operate me? Yeah, I kind of read the manual. It's it's okay. It's easy. Whatever. It's like, oh, my father was a mechanic. I can do this shit. Yeah, it's like, okay. Ooh. <laughs> yeah they Amazing. don't really they don't really need to explain anything more. It's or it's kind of already there. <laughs> like, oh, I guess I guess my manual's not that not that difficult. Eh, it was kind of easy. My dad's a, my dad was a machinist. I grew up with this. Yeah. I understand it. He was also a historian, so I know the terms <laughs> yeah. and language yeah. for a thousand yeah. years ago. <laughs> oh. It's like okay, I just happened to be the perfect person for this. That's no big deal. Yeah, it's like oh, the Brazilian Empire is invading with this huge fleet of ships and tanks. It's like oh. But I have the apocalypse gun. <laughs> there is the dragon's breath, I think. The dragon's breath, yeah. And it just eliminates everything. It's and you have a napalm beautiful nuke. sequence. I love that. <laughs> you have, you have so a beautiful funny. sequence of that really detailed, like spaceship yeah. thing just crashing, and it's just really so detailed. The oh. the guy's design is so detailed. I'm glad he got better than this. Because the designs, even though they're really good, they're not really practical. Mm-hmm. But later oh, designs from awesome. him, <laughs> like, but like later designs, they're all detailed and ev- and everything seems to have a function, right? When you, especially when you see, he worked on the me- the mechanical design for Last Exile, and everything in Last Exile makes a lot of sense. Yeah. This is definitely more style over practicality. Yeah, it really it was a Steam Boy. Yeah, oh. yeah. He also did the mechanical design for Steam Boy. Oh man. Okay. Yeah. No. Yeah. And okay. Steam Boy is just the Steam Boy is just. Uh, it's it's the, pretty good. mechanical design. This is more stylish. Is like mm-hmm. when he goes and we can review Steam Boy. Nice. Yeah. Uh, we should do that. Uh, it's just him doing whatever the fuck. It's my money. <laughs> <laughs> 
you know but the story is just a uh, story rta doesn't make sense there's espos after espos like oh i got damage like cheyenne gets damage at some point because like he never get damaged but he got damaged but for, for something when he was fighting i was like i'm damaged so we made you this awesome battle suit out of fucking scraps and just <laughs> speed Gave you the dragon's now, breath and all things. Just fucking there you go. Yeah, have there fun. you go. Have the dragon's breath. You can operate it. Good luck. And then she just destroys another Brazilian fleet like it's nothing. <laughs> I, like, I love it as well cool. when fucking uh, when Cheyenne is just coming out to fucking save her when uh, Amadan shows up. And uh, he goes out the <laughs> Shine comes out to save him and he's just fucking speeding out with a mechanic still hanging on to him. <laughs> It's just not. You're not done. <laughs> oh man, there's a lot of funny moments in this. Like, it's uh... he he whips out this awesome white, like prestige white clothing. It's like, oh no, I'm getting repaired. It looks nasty, so you don't need to see. Like, <laughs> yeah, okay, the, cool. the the shy the shy uh, conservative robot. <laughs> the shy conservative. Yeah, same thing when he meets the guru when she's naked. That's what I say. So, anyways, um, would you? Put on some clothes, maybe, you know? Just He's putting his that? robot hands over his not yeah. eyes. <laughs> she goes, a modest robot? Well, well, that's weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess I would react the same way. It's like, huh, okay, <laughs> interesting. What I got a kick out of was our first experience with Elmadion. Uh, when this when his like big robot henchman Orinos or Orinus or whatever his yeah. name is, it goes back. It's like back in Brazil, and it sh- it shows the the epic fire nuke that they just destroyed this entire city. Orinos checks in. He's like, ah, the Brazilian emperor will be pleased with this. And then Almeida comes. He was uh, shocker. He was less than pleased with the results. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then Elmidian starts speaking because you see this guy, Hammerhead Shark, tentacles. He's all badass looking. There's shit going blowing up everywhere. And you're like, oh man, what's he gonna sound like? Is it gonna be? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> will <laughs> you? You will bow to me, or you will bow? Because he doesn't have bow, any bow human interaction, and he's just robot, and was created by robots, and being a robot, so like very mechanical speaking, right? <laughs> and then he speaks and he sounds like Skeletor from Kevin. <laughs> yeah, you will <laughs> you will bow to my power. Turn this ship around. <laughs> you think the Emperor of Brazil was pleased? <laughs> it's like, it's oh like a middle aged woman that's mad. <laughs> yeah, just like, you know what? Your your design is intimidating, but god damn it, your voice is Something else. <laughs> this is so funny. Like, oh my god. It's kind of like when Mike Tyson speaks. <laughs> it just doesn't match <laughs> the the aura that's given off. Yeah, get, the given fucking, off. Uh, oh my god, the fucking like, lisp and everything he's got going on. It's like, hmm. Oh man, yeah, no, Almadine is... He's intimidating looking, but, you know, you can't, can't take him too seriously when he's talking. And it is kind of one of those things as well with him. Kind of... Again, it's a short OVA. It's like, but it's forty minutes long, but it's like fifteen minutes of live action. Yeah. So, uh, it's so it's like it's kind of funny. It's like, oh, this is my long fucking lived uh, lived rival here, and it's like, how does he die, or does he get defeated? I guess it's like, yes, not in the first explosion, but in the second explosion when Shine just holds him down and. Or fucking uh, Elmadon has grabbed Shine and he's like, you can't fire your dragon's be- breath from here. Because if you do, Ikuru will also get caught in the blast and she will die. And Shine just thinks about it for a couple seconds. He's like, no, she has luck on her side. Yeah, I <laughs> yeah don't worry about it. She's lucky. <laughs> <laughs> just fucking fires up the dragon's breath, breath killing him. It's like, damn. <laughs> Imagine being there in that situation and then you're fucking come. Uh, companion who qu- claimed to need you to even operate. It's like, I believe she will survive. We'll leave it up to faith. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> previous well, he pilot, it turned out to be inside right. Inside of the cockpit. Like, previous pilot, inside of the cockpit, wearing a helmet, everything is okay, gets fucking sniped in the head by the little crack in the fucking armor. It's like, <laughs> ah, my, my operators have luck. It's like, mm. I don't know. I don't know about, I don't know that, about one. that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I like how their yeah, explanation. Like the, the, what... the rest, the rest of the evil robots survive, but they just like, well, I guess we're just going to go back to Brazil. <laughs> well, I don't don't want to fight anymore. Well, yeah, yeah, you can't, can't compete with the dragon's the breath. Powerful guys, it makes sense. They're like, yeah, you know, there's something about this thing that just kind of annihilates our forces in a single shot completely. Mm. We have what do we have to combat it with? Tanks. Thanks. Yeah, no, thank you. No, thank you. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, well. Shame there's no sequel, because I would have loved to see the Emperor of Brazil be like, all right, you motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah, I would have liked to see more of this. This was, uh, I was like, man, it's over already? That was actually kind of fun. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then you just go watch the, the live action without, there's no translation <laughs> live action yeah. anymore. Oh, I yeah, the content. and I became I became so sad because like they were talking about the production of the live action and they're like yeah like it is expensive so we had to uh, like get this rent this place so far away from everything and then we we need to produce the the models in in the studio in Tokyo load in a in a in a truck but like the truck is big so they can transport everything, but it's too big. But because of the price, it, it needs to be too big. So they don't need, you know, do more than one, one travel with this stuff. <laughs> so they, they, they put everything inside of the truck. And when they, they get to the studio, they rent every, the robe, the robot, the, the scale robot is broken. So they had to just fix it with epoxy putty and, and duct tape. I was like, man, that is just depressing, dude. I was like, man, that is... At least the, the guys seem happy about it. Yeah, or two of them. One didn't, like, didn't see too happy. He was complaining a lot. But I was like, man, that is... Like, you need to really love this shit. Because <laughs> goddamn, I would just give up. Like, it's imagine just... Project, for sure. yeah, imagine passing, like, putting months to create a full-scale robot. With moving parts and shit, mm -hmm. load into a truck, and the first thing it happens when you look at it in the studio, you're going to finally use it, is that the thing is just broken. <laughs> <laughs> the parts is just broken in half and shit. I was like, oh man, fuck this, uh, fuck this shit. It's just, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna produce some boy show. Oh okay. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, no, it's great. I fucking I post screenshots as well from the the interview. I love it. It's just like, oh my god, I just got fucking flipped off by some dude. 30 years in the past. <laughs> uh, it's fucking, it's, it's great. I love these kinds of pro, uh, uh, passion projects. Just Should this have been a thing that was ever created? Probably not, because it doesn't seem like a very good idea, but god damn it, I love that it's a thing. I don't know, I think <laughs> I could have definitely settled with a few more episodes, just a short OVA series, yeah. not a full-blown series, probably, but uh, uh, at yeah. least see it's the like Brazilian Emperor. Episode OVA? Yeah, three episode OVA, instead of a one, absolutely. I yeah, know yeah, yeah. Like something like area of the, the uh, uh, animation, something like mm -hmm. that long. Yeah, would have been fun. Oh well, I like the uh, I like the sassiness of the main character. They definitely uh, tried to, they definitely tried to capitalize on her sex appeal of the time of the eighties. You know, hot blonde chick, chilling out, sunbathing, modest robot, <laughs> very aware of her. Her appeal. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> yep. Yeah, nice short little, uh, nice short little review. I would say, uh, oh. I gave the show a nice solid little six out of ten. I think that's kind of a good place for it to be. Not, not bad, not great, but hey, it kept my interest and I enjoyed it. Yeah, no, same. I give it a six. Like story wise, it's nothing. Yeah, yeah. Really, but it's like again, it's literally like that six is literally all its style. God damn it, it's stylish as hell. It's it's fun. And again, it's just it's a passion project and it comes through. You can see that the people that made this absolutely cared about it. It's cool. It's it's not many there are many OBAs like this. Uh so yeah. It's I'm glad that I'm glad that it's a thing. I'm glad that they were allowed to make it. Me too. I give it a six as well. Hey, six 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 across the board. <laughs> All I right. Love the beast. Yeah, you can you can find this show on on YouTube. It's very easily uh, searchable, so it's out there. It's all right. Our 
episode 100 is next, and we're doing Otaku No Video. Woo! We've had that on the uh, on the dock for quite a long time uh, to get to this anime. And then it's, uh, I guess it's chapter two in our long journey from there. Uh, see what horrors Hickey puts us through, Tori. Oh, my God. He's going to make us hey, watch no, more. No, 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 no. Trust me. <laughs> Trust me. There's, there's fun things in the horizon. I sure hope so. <laughs> I'm, I'm less optimistic. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess that does it for us on this short episode. Everybody, we'll see you next time. Peace. Bye.